64K. Where the future is so bright you gotta wear shades. Welcome to DOS Days, a nostalgic look back at PC gaming from the mid 80s to mid 90s. This is a companion piece series to Player One Memories, which covers the arcade scene during this same period. For this series, I'll be jumping back and looking at all those great DOS era and early CD ROM titles that I played and loved so much, as well as the times and places I experienced there. So let's jump on back to 1990, a true crossroads of gaming excellence as PC and console games really came into their own, and the quality jump for both was massive at the time. On the pop culture front, we got the immortal Arnold vehicle, Total Recall, which taught me how to get your ass to Mars, and to get there required a massive of body count. Musically, MC Hammer managed to snag a Grammy for basically sampling the best parts of a Rick James song while wearing Aladdin pants. So the Grammy standards are pretty much the same. And finally on the TV front, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air made its debut, which gave us the immense talent of the Colton dance. A dance so infectious, it probably even made Charles Manson crack a smile. But let's jump on over to today's game, the 1990 Origin Systems gem. Wing Commander. I got a 286 PC computer in the early 90s and it was my next step in my computer gaming journey. Before that, playing Sierra stuff, Prince of Persia and Civilization was all about going to a friend's house and mooching on their PCs for a few hours. But now I finally had one and sat it right next to my beloved Commodore 64. There were so many new games to explore. It was kind of overwhelming. One of those games though that caught my eye was Wing Commander. I just had to play it. I had just finished playing Space Rogue, another space sim that Origin put out in 1989, a year before this, on my Commodore 64, and I was hungry for more of the same. It turned out to be completely different, but it lived up to my harp way more than I could ever have imagined. Wing Commander was created by Chris Roberts, who had carved out an impressive career at Origin Systems, having worked on Ultima 5, Bad Blood, Times of Law, and later on at Origin, Strike Commander. The game was essentially a space combat simulator, but it was much deeper than that, in so many ways. The basic plot is you're a pilot for the Terran Confederation defending space against the war-hungry Kilrathi aliens. The focus was space combat, but the approach was so cinematic. It made you feel like you're playing out an episode in an epic sci-fi TV show. Gameplay was a mix of chatting to people at the local bar, gleaming tips for combat, local gossip and advancing the main storyline and the second part was the epic missions you would partake in. Everything from wiping out small convoy groups of Kilrathi to taking on massive capital ships. It just felt so big in nature. The atmosphere of the game though is the one thing that set it apart. The cinematic presentation and the awesome soundtrack that made the mission briefings and debriefings feel much more personal, more than just a bunch of stock screens at the end of a mission. How you performed out there plays out heavily in the debriefing and hence promotions and awards. It reminded me a lot of the classic micro simulators I played on my Commodore 64 such as Gunship and Project Stealth Fighter. The space combat though was so dynamic with things like plotting your course and talking to your wingman, dodging asteroids and fighting for your life. The combat was so chaotic but it always felt fresh even if you played the mission before. The graphics were amazing for the time and still look pretty good now in my opinion. It also had a brilliant dynamic soundtrack that flawlessly switched itself up based on your flight situation. The characters you talked to were all written really well, drawing you in even more as all the missions progressed. It was just a game like no other back then. I subsequently played the rest of the series as the years went on and was blown away each time by the leaps in storytelling and graphics each one delivered and hopefully through this series I'll get to highlight more games from this wonderful saga. If you've never tried it before the entire PC series is available on GOG, good old games, and set up to work on modern computers. There's also some really cool alternate versions of this first game in the series such as the Sega CD version with its full voiced audio, the Super Nintendo version which is a port of all the expansion packs added to this game, and the 3DO version which is a completely different look and style to this 
this original. The game managed to win the 1991 Computer Gaming World's overall game of the year, which was much deserved and a classic DOS game I always look back on fondly. Game over. And thanks for joining me, Bastish B at 64K. If you can like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.